Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. It is hatching day number two. This is our second batch of chicks um, that we were hatching on our homestead. It didn't go as planned. And I'm going to talk about that right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So our chicks were supposed to start hatching today. We had a surprise yesterday when one chick hatched early in the morning and then nothing else happened until later in the evening. We started having a chick pip, which means poke through the shell. So I figured that overnight we would have a, another chick. Unfortunately, that chick ended up dying. Then we had two more eggs that started uh, showing some signs of life and hatching. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today and show you what has gone on during the meantime. So be ready to watch some videos. If you're a little squeamish, I'll warn you right now, it might be a little graphic for your stomach. But let's uh, show you what those chicks look like as they've gone through the day today. <clears throat> so this is our incubator box. If you didn't see it on our last video, Hatching Day, and I will link that video up above. But this is our incubator. We got it from Tractor Supply. I do not recommend this incubator at all. You can see the light is flashing. Um, this, I, to me, is, is junk. This is our second batch, and it's already been malfunctioning. And so I'll show you this model here. It's the Pro Series from Farm Innovators. And uh, for this batch, I'm going to be lucky if I even have three hatch out of here um, because this this has not worked right um, since about the second week in uh, the number. You can see it says number eight. Uh, this countdown quit working uh, the other day and I actually only counted down to eight after I had unplugged the unit to take out the um, egg turner. The humidity is finally reading correctly. Um, the temperature I just turned down. But, um, yeah, this is not working right at all. So, if I get any more live chicks out of here, that's going to be uh, amazing. Because um, this hasn't been working very well. Um, but, anyways, I have that little guy there. And, yes, I do have food in here. And I have a little thing of water. Because this guy, um, like I said, hatched yesterday morning. It's been, been by itself since yesterday morning, but I've left it in here to hopefully get the other ones to hatch out. we got an egg there and an egg there that's actually starting to hatch out. There was another one. Let's see if I can take you over here. Another egg there. Um, that one actually died last night, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really upset about this thing and you can see how the cords that uh, uh, show the temperature and there's one for humidity over here they're right where the chicks can uh, eat them and stuff like that so very very poor design for this incubator I don't like it at all so it's going to be going back to the store after I get some chicks out of here um, but I'm gonna open this up and show you what we got going on Here's our chick chicks. Like I said, I've got this egg here and this one here. They're starting to hatch. These ones, unless unless something happens, I think these guys all died. And I um, don't know about those ones yet. I think I heard something moving in there. Um, I put these in uh, little silicone rings to kind of keep them together. Ouch! Yeah, this guy's a little feisty. It's been biting me. <laughs> But um, these eggs just roll everywhere. This is a very uneven surface. I said very, very poor design for this incubator. I don't like it. Um, I have my own temperature and humidity control in here. Um, or thermometer so I can see what it is. Because again, the, the actual one for the machine does not work. <clears throat> but yeah, I've got this one. These guys are all Aracanas. Um, I'm hoping I will get 
more of them to hatch. This is a blue. I've never seen a blue chick, um, so it's kind of neat. Feisty little guy. <laughs> but anyways, so hopefully, hopefully, um, this one was really starting to crack around the edges. This one hasn't moved too much since the last time. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, this is hatching set number two. And I will um, give more video updates as the day goes and see if any more of these guys hatch. Like I said, this one here, it was starting to hatch yesterday, but it died overnight. Um, I don't know if it got too hot in here or too dry, um, but it, it perished. So it's just staying in here. I'm going to see if these ones start doing anything because um, there was no sound or anything coming from these. But there was sound of movement in these ones. So that's why they're separated. Just so I can keep an eye on what's going on. Um, as it stands right now, you know, we've only got a couple chicks. I might have to go get some of the younger chicks from what's in my coop outside. Um, to put them in the brooder box so there's enough chicks to, um, you know, keep each other warm. And to, to have a nice family unit so to speak as they grow up because only a few chicks is not going to bode well so i'm going to put the lid back on this so it stays warm and then i'll bring you guys back and we'll see how it goes so i figured i'd give you guys an update i took the one chick out because it was just <laughs> freaking out um and so I put the other one in the brooder box with an older chick. And then uh, I've been watching these two eggs that I just showed you uh, in the last clip. And we ran into the same problem that I ran into with my uh, very last chick of the last batch. The membrane of the eggs is starting to dry out and encapsulate the chicks in their shells making them uh, basically stuck inside their shells I caught these two before it got too far past and so um, I gently um, started pulling away the shell a little bit uh, the red that you see is not blood I had a red napkin that I had very moistened to help uh, get that membrane moist again and start getting it dissolved and away from the chicks. Um, I only pulled uh, about the top, uh, not even a quarter of the uh, egg away um, where the chicks are. Um, and I'm trying to let them work the rest of the way out themselves if they can. I should have enough of the egg open where they can get out the rest of the way. That way, um, you know, they kind of build their strength by uh, getting themselves out of their shells. But I will be continuing to monitor these two, making sure that uh, they can get out of the shells. If not, I will have to intervene again and uh, basically peel them out of their shells, which is a very, very tedious and delicate situation. Um, because if the blood vessels in the membranes aren't 100% uh, dried up, uh, you could cause hemorrhaging and they will die. So um, it's a very painstaking process of making sure that the membrane area you're pulling off the chick, uh, that the blood vessels have completely dried up so they don't bleed to death. Um, but I will keep you guys posted, see how these guys do in about a half an hour to an hour. I'm hoping since I got most of the egg off um, the top part where they actually bust out of the shell, that they'll be able to come out the rest of the way. But I, again, I will keep you updated. Okay, so the update is the one has gotten itself out of its shell. I took the shell out. The other one I removed a little bit more. Uh, it should be able to push its way out. If not, I will show you how to carefully extract a chick out of its shell. I'm hoping I won't have to, um, but I'm going to continue to monitor it because monitor it, uh, I don't want to lose these chicks just because um, the stupid incubator can't seem to keep the humidity high enough for the uh, membranes not to dry out and encapsulate those chicks into their shells. So, um, yeah, if that other chick does not push its way out in about the uh, next half an hour, 
um, I will show you guys how to extract a chick out of its shell in case you come upon a similar situation. So, but you can see it's it's alive and it's moving and it's trying to come out. It's one wing is free, but it just has not pushed itself out of the shell yet. It's trying, um, but uh, yeah, we'll give it about another half an hour and then I will uh, get it out of the shell because if I leave it too long like this, it's going to get glued into its shell and uh, it'll eventually die. So, I'll keep you posted. Okay, so the chick is uh, showing signs of distress trying to get out of its shell. Um, it's probably got a little spot where it's still stuck to the shell so it can't get its head out to pull itself out. So, I'm going to show you how to carefully extract the chick out of its shell. Again, this is a very, very uh, sensitive... A procedure you could easily kill these chicks if you rush in too soon or if you work too fast um, this is something that you definitely have to be patient with um, this is my third extraction and I've only hatched chicks twice um, so I've had to learn this as being a new chicken mama uh, hatching chicks for the first time and again, it's because of this particular uh, incubator. It really is not a good incubator. Uh, if I had an incubator that worked properly, these chicks would not have an issue getting out of their shell. So uh, I'm going to open this up and we're going to get the chick and help it get it out of its shell. All right. So here's the chick. You see it's still kind of stuck in its shell here, which is why it can't get out. It's still kind of stuck right there. So we're gently going to move this piece where it's stuck so it can push itself the rest of the way out. Alright, okay. Now I'll see if I can show it to you. I'm not sure if the camera will focus or not. But this right here is the membrane of the egg and it's dried out and it's actually getting stuck to the chick which means it can't get out but now we've opened it up enough and if any time if you have to extract a chick and you're peeling the shell and the membrane away and you start to see uh, blood coming out immediately stop put the egg down wait about an hour or so give that blood vessel time to uh, dry back up and close otherwise you will kill the chick um, this one is pretty much dried up there's only a few blood vessels left that aren't a hundred percent dry um, but overall she's ready to come out so I've been just slowly slowly peeling away and again this isn't blood this is I used a red napkin I probably shouldn't have for photo purposes um, but she's trying to come out she's just stuck so we're going to gently move her around and pull some of this off. <clears throat> and I'm just carefully breaking the eggs away. And the bird will let you know if it's in pain. If you pull something, it's like pulling their hair, they will let you know. And then you stop. I'm gently pulling this away. There's no fresh blood right now. This is all dried up. Very, very delicate procedure. Again, this is the third one I've had to do, and I shouldn't have to do this. The membrane should not have dried out where they get stuck in here. <clears throat> and I've got to kind of do it quick so they don't get too cold because they're in the open air right now. And you don't want to crush the shell as much as possible. 
and easy. Okay. And don't pull them out if you can help it because they're still attached to the, the shell. They have an umbilical cord, sort of, that's attached to the yoke that's attached to the shell. And so if you pull them out of the shell or pull the shell completely off, you could uh, kill them because that umbilical cord has not had a chance to dry up either. So you have to just be very, very gentle. Again, what I'm doing is the last resort if you run into this problem where the, the membrane has dried out and the chick cannot get out of its shell. Come on. I'm gently letting the shell fall off. I'm not pulling. I'm gently letting it naturally come off. There you go. All right. I don't know if you can see it or not. This is where the umbilical cord basically is attached still. And if you were to yank this shell off, you would pull a hole right in their abdomen. So that's what you don't want to do. You do not want to put a hole in their abdomen. So gently, 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 gently. There we go. All right. She's out. We're going to set her in here and put the top back on so she can warm up. But that is how you do an emergency extraction if your shell is dried completely up. I'm going to go wash my hands since we just handled live poetry and all their innards, so to speak. Um, I got the temperature turned up in here so they can get warmed up quick and dry out. And then I'll bring you guys back here when they're uh, dried off and show you how they're doing. So this is the update on the two chicks that we hatched. Um, I actually had to used my heat gun on a very low setting and blow dry them. Um, this one's doing really good. <laughs> it's going to take a while to find its feet. This one, this one's still struggling to get up and around. Um, um, I blow dry it the best I can. So I'm going to go ahead and actually put these two out with the other one out in the brooder box where I know the temperature is consistent and where it has um, some friends and we'll see how it does. I'm hoping this one will, will survive. It does take a while for some of them to find their feet so to speak. Um, so I'm not giving up yet. I'm not calling that this one's going to die on us. Um, but I'm going to put them out in the brooder box and see how they acclimate out there. You can see this one is itching to get outside. So we're going to go put them outside. So the last update on the second batch of chickens, unfortunately um, one of them had uh, died. I was too traumatized trying to get out of that shell um, and it happened so you can't save them all. Um, so we have two chicks from this second batch which is really horrible. I had 11 fertilized eggs that had grown to full maturity and should have hatched but again because of the incubator issues I've only got two. I did bring in one of the older chicks to hang out with them try to keep them warm um, but uh, they should be okay with the heat lamp here you can see the size difference between them there's three weeks difference and the size is huge um, but with the heat lamp and with the warmer temperatures they should be okay I'll keep you guys posted. Um, in three weeks, I hope to be moving these guys out to the other pen with the rest of the chicks. And uh, we shall see. Um, this right here, this 
chicken here is actually the the one that I had saved from the last batch same issue it was stuck in the uh, in the shell so uh, but like I said we lost one unfortunately you can't save them all but we do have two okay so today is a new day and I wanted to show you guys uh, the last update as far as these chicks go we ended up uh, going to town and buying some more chicks that are roughly the same age um, these new chicks are uh, kind of the same breed we're going for they're actually olive eggers which are a hybrid and that's what I'm going to be raising is, is olive eggers anyway um, but we bought more chicks that way our two little babies had more that they can grow up with and our two are the small ones we got that one there and that one there those are the two that survived the hatching fiasco and then of course the big one that survived the last hatching fiasco his shirt looks ugly it looks like a um, it actually looks like a bird it looks like a, a raven or a grackle uh, uh, fledgling but it's not it's a chicken <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's the update that we had to do um, because having just three birds is not going to work for um, for raising them. It's just not enough. They can't group together to stay warm and socially they needed more than just three birds. So we went ahead and we purchased uh, more chicks uh, to raise together. So that is what's going on with our second batch of chicks. Um, it didn't go very well. I'm very disappointed um, with the incubator. I'm at a loss for words losing so many babies because of a faulty piece of equipment. Uh, be sure that before you purchase any type of equipment like incubators that you do a thorough research and review. Ask around uh, other people who might uh, be into incubating their own chicks. Um, find ones that have a proven uh, success record. Uh, my husband's taking that other piece of junk back to the store today and we're going to get a different model. Um, but this was a learning process for us and I'm just thankful that we're actually able to go and get more chicks of the same variety that we kind of want to raise and put them with the um, two that we had. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it informative about what can happen when equipment malfunctions, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who might need to know this information as well. I thank you for watching us on our chicken journey. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already so you can stay involved with the journey and it encompasses a lot of things from gardening to cooking to chickens to health, just a lot of different things. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay updated and I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye.